multiple PBA titles are on the line here in Detroit at the 10th edition of the sports ultimate test, the PBA World Series of Bowling. Five consecutive nights of competition featuring pros from around the globe, among them the PBA's best. Tonight, the World Series starts with the Cheetah Championship. Recent title winner Dick Allen and 2017 U.S. Open champ Rhino Page are featured. The energy and emotion of the World Series of Bowling starts now. Tonight, we come your way from just outside downtown Detroit in Allen Park, Michigan, as we kick off five straight nights of primetime PBA coverage here on FS1 with the 10th edition of the World Series of Bowling. Our field of four finalized just hours ago. Matt McNeil, Kyle Sherman, both making their singles TV debuts. The vets, Dick Allen, Rhino Page, have revitalized their careers this season. Packed house behind us here at the legendary Thunder Bowl. Rob Stone, the Hall of Famer, Randy Peterson, back here with you. We're about halfway through the PBA campaign, and the league has set up a bit of an endurance test for our pros this week. Yeah, they sure have it. It's really showing in the faces of the <laughs> veterans and Rhino Page and Dick Allen. They looked really serious. But what a grind the World Series of Bowling is. And how about some more history? Not like we haven't had any already this season on Fox. Not one, not two, but five straight nights of primetime bowling on FS1. First time in the history of the PBA. But getting back to the grind of the World Series of Bowling, Rob, if there's one thing we've learned over the years, the World Series of Bowling can either break or make a player's season. That is true. Perhaps the most compelling visual you're going to see tonight on our broadcast is just how close these pros are dancing to the gutter. A little Aerosmith living on the edge. Mm. It's called Cheetah. It's 33 feet in length, and this is where the players want to get their bowling balls, both on the left and right side of the lane. And, well, right there, that's living on the edge. About an eighth of an inch to the right, and it's in the gutter for zero. That's how you have to attack Cheetah all pattern. That's where the players are going to try to get their bowling ball. It's a lot of fun to watch. It's compelling. They are dancing with the devil literally yeah. on every single shot. For more on that, here's Kimberly Pressler. Thanks, guys. You were talking about how close they're going to be playing close to the gutter. So I asked all the players, you know, are you comfortable with it? And they all seem to be pretty okay with it. In fact, Matt McNeil said playing close to the gutter is the way to attack this pattern. And Rhino Page says he loves playing close to the gutter. In fact, he dared his ball to go in it all this week but I should point out that just a few short hours ago in match play he earned himself a gutter ball and he got a little burned playing so close all right Kimberly thank you uh, usually Randy it's five competitors for this the cheetah championship it's four we started with 135 from 17 different countries we had our cut to the top 16 earlier today was the round of 16 and then the round of eight completed just moments ago to get our top four finals and you see Paige, Sherman, McNeil, Allen. You'll see highlights of how they progressed through the round of eight to get here. But we're going to begin with something unique to television. Everybody is going to play an opening game right now to put seeding into place. Highest score is your one seed. Next highest, two, and then three, and then four. So you want a strong game here in match number one to get you automatically to the championship match. Absolutely. Nothing better than the number one seed and only have to win one game to win the title and they're going to do it on the cheetah oil pattern yeah that cheetah oil pattern is a lot of fun to watch as we touched on in the open it's a very short pattern only 33 feet in length remember the lane is 60 feet long a lot of friction so the players are going to play the outside part of the lane where, where the lane's really dry and they're going to use that outside part of the lane to get their bowling balls to curve into the pocket there's rhino page what a season he's had he has been essentially away from television for a while and he has exploded back on the stage this season he has finished fifth in four consecutive televised appearances the good news for rhino won't happen today yeah can't finish fifth uh, tonight rhino kyle sherman from o'fallon missouri just 25 years old you saw him earlier in the campaign and the roth holman doubles with his partner brad miller they were the number one seed lost in the title match Starts us off with a strike. Listen to the crowd here outside Detroit. 
a little bit farther to the inside than what we saw in that uh, video where he was really playing the outside part of the lane. Two lefties on the show. Here's Rhino Page, the 35-year-old from Orlando. Are you kidding me? A 7-10 to start? Oh. Unlucky. Well, better than head-to-head -to, -head to see the 7 versus 7-10. Yeah. Dick Allen, the other vet on tonight's show from Lexington, South Carolina, just outside Columbia. <laughs> I've got Aerosmith living on the edge <laughs> in my brain right now. Remember, no player is eliminated after this game. Page buries the seven, leaves the ten. Here comes Matt McNeil. Fascinating story. This will be the first of at least two times you're going to see Matt McNeil this week. He'll be on Thursday's World Championship show at the two seat. Southpaw leads the seven. Oh, not a bad opener. Come on now. That was his first shot in a singles televised event. It, it's real interesting. Two southpaws, two right handers. The, the Rhino Page using reactive resin. Matt McNeil, the other southpaw, using urethane. Exact same way the right handers are playing it. I mean, it catches my breath, Randy, yeah. how far out they are playing. But you know what? For a professional, once you know it'll curve back from that spot, you're not afraid to throw it there. Neil covers the seven for the spare. Things are happening fast and furious here in Detroit. Sherman slows the pace down. Sherman using urethane. Dick Allen using reactive resin. And that's why the shot shape of Kyle Sherman and Matt McNeil will be much straighter than the other two players. Pretty good start, though, for Kyle at being on his first singles televised event, as is this man right here, Matt McNeil. Watch this follow through. It's like the left handed version of Stu Williams. Ah, come on, young man. Back over to Sherman as he tries to clean things up in the second. Again, all four bowlers. Rolling right now to complete our position round. Covers that one to Sherman. He had a little bit of trouble with some 10 pins in his final match. And that's kind of why you got that reaction we just saw. Neil. Open frame. Dick Allen up. TV shows this season for the vet from South Carolina. There might be some folks out there, Randy, you're saying, well, this kid right here in the yellow looks familiar. Kyle Sherman is a borderline YouTube sensation. Yeah. He and his doubles partner, Brad Miller, got a YouTube channel that has just been spiking with subscribers as of late. That one, though, a little bit through the nose, isn't going to get too punished for it. You see the location down lane, a good two boards left. And on this oil pattern, because it's so short, there's no way that's going to hold to the pocket. Boy, this is short attention span theater, right? It is bowler after bowler yep. after bowler. It is hard to keep up. Our statistician, Mike Edwards, is doing a wonderful job. Yeah, get down, 10. That makes that one palatable. Barely, though. Remember, he left a pocket 7-10 last time on that lane. And this time, it was almost a solid 8-10 pocket hit. Not very friendly on the left lane for Rhino Page. Sherman, one of the two youngsters on the show. Randy, I've noticed early, they were only just wrapped up his third frame. He's not getting rushed into a pace that he doesn't want right now. You can sense that he is slowing things down to his preferred tempo. Rhino Page. to 
my dick, Alan. <sighs> well, he is all business tonight, isn't he? Yeah. Arguably having one of his best I seasons agree. ever on the PBA Tour. I think that's been one of the themes so far this campaign, Randy, is, is the revitalization of so many yeah. vets' seasons. Uh, Rhino Page has been off for a couple years. Here he is, again on television. Norm Duke, what he's been able to do. Jason Belmonte, steamrolling the competition. Been a little bit of everything. Sean Rash, include him in that conversation as well. Uh, maybe in my younger days. <laughs> and right now, this is kind of like a dumpster yeah, fire man. for Rhino Page, who hasn't that. missed the pocket and can't put consecutive strikes together because of bad carry. Twenty-five-year-old Kyle Sherman getting his first ever singles televised competition. Well, he's got a big challenge ahead of him here in the fourth. Page, 12th year on the tour. Point six percent of the time on the tour, the 2810. Yeah, I think I've taken care of. I think I've made this like three times in my life. He made the 7-10 split more than I've made the 2-8. That's amazing. Yeah, because he can bounce that 7 or the 10 out, uh, but making the 2-8-10, yeah. I think it's, it might be a little bit tougher, I think. Depending on where you're bowling. All right, it's in the pocket. We're here to hit the pocket. Come on. There's that positive reinforcement again from the 33-year-old McNeil from Minneapolis. Dick Allen. Trusting it to the right, Rob, and that's why it keeps going high. Gotta get out of that ball. Maybe having trouble letting go of it. You heard him say, I can't get out of that ball. Allen's still in the lead as he concludes the fourth. And as of now, he would be your one seed. It really keeps that right leg up an extended time on the follow through. Right now, Dick Allen, the only player to throw consecutive strikes. Normally, That's Kyle Sherman. Normally, cheat a pretty high score. That was best singles finish this season, 10th at the Lubbock Open, a tournament that was won by Dick Allen. Was one of our dual oil pattern tournaments. Rhino Page, three times this season, he's finished fifth. Right now, Rhino, despite the struggles, in second place. That'll boost the confidence. Ball change. I never stare. And he is really living on the edge. I mean, he's playing way out there. Kyle Sherman missed two 10 pins and still come right. away with a victory. A shot That's what we're here to do. Good shots. Match number one for seeding purposes only. Yeah. Oh, that's got a wheel. <sighs> and even though Dick Allen boy, oh boy, is somewhat oh boy. comfortably in the lead right now here, Randy, I, I think all four of these guys have some serious questions that they're going to be asking themselves in the upcoming commercial break. Ball change from another player, Dick Allen, changing this time. Yeah, th there's going to be a lot of soul searching going on during the commercial break for all the players. Rhino Page may be on the fastest track based on his last shot to solving the problem. Correct. 
Come on, grind her up. Well, that's yeah. the problem with throwing urethane. It, it doesn't react as hard as reactive resin. You get it a little bit right or left of target, and it doesn't get there. That's a big whiff. That wasn't even close. And that big lead is now down to five. Sure is. Halfway through our seeding match, all four return after this quick break to find out who's in the four, three, two, and one spot. The PBA on FS1 is sponsored by Go Bowling for promotional offers, tips to improve your game, news, or to locate a bowling center near you. Log on to GoBowling.com. Beautiful look at the Fox Theater back in 1989. It was listed as a National Historic Landmark for its architecture. Well, they've had some big timers there. Elvis Presley, Frank Sinatra, Sammy Davis Jr., and Liza Minnelli, among others. Rob Stone, Randy Peterson back here with you with our Flow Bowling Tournament highlights. The round of eight, it was best of five matches. Rhino Page advanced, taking care of Michael Holloman, three to two. Holloman giving Rhino Page all he wanted in that match, but Rhino Page prevails. He makes his fourth televised finals. Don Barrett so close. Hasn't been the season he's expecting. Yeah, not with that ball reaction. It's not going to be. Kyle Sherman, he had a good one, though. He wins three games to one. Dick Allen down 0-2 in the best of five matches. And then he got things rolling. Yeah, he wins game three, and you could just feel the momentum shift into Dick Allen's corner. He takes care of Josh Blanchard, three games to two. Finally, it was McNeil versus O'Neal. Billy O, we saw too much of this from him. Matthew McNeil drops them all. He wins it three to one to fill out our final four bracket. Here's other finishers here at the Cheetah Championship. We saw Holloman, Blanchard, Barrett, and O'Neill falling in the round of eight. Tom Doherty, we're talking about the veterans having these comeback yep. seasons. Tom Doherty is another great example of that. Brad Angelo there at number 12. Barney checking in at number four. B.J. Moore, we're going to see him a little bit later this week. E.J. Tackett, a fine season he's had. He, not a good day. Not a good day for E.J. He was a little, yeah, little rough on himself. He was. But it's been a fine season for him. So we're back to action here. Here's the opening theme right now, Randy. We've seen five strikes and five open frames, and I have a feeling we're about to see a sixth open frame. Yeah, I can almost guarantee it, seeing how there's only been one big four ever made on television, and that was by the great Walter Ray Williams Jr. You saw that look from Rhino Page. You were just saying a couple of minutes ago, I think he's, he's on the fast track to figuring things out, and then, boom, that's how he opens it up. Well, he changed that bowling ball and struck on the right lane, so I, I thought that he was good. Ten pin. Nice days. Now, this is a war of attrition right now in our seeding match. Game effort from Rhino. But our sixth open frame. Well, I think we need to point out that the majority of the games that have been bowled this week have been in the other part of the center. Remember, there's 94 lanes here at Thunder Bowl. We're now in the arena, lanes one through 20, and it's a completely different surface. This is Anvil Lane, where the players were on the other side of the building were going on throw Anvil Lane. There's a lot more friction on this side of the house. A lot more lights, a lot more fans as well. Yeah. So the environment, the playing environment, the field has changed. And the guys are doing their best to adapt. And I bet there's some, some hacks out there, guys like me who would look at these numbers and go, these are the best. I could beat these guys. These are the pros. Yeah. Try oh, throwing one time. it. Right there. Oh, a half inch a away from the shot, gutter. Right. Good luck. Come on. We're here to make it. Yeah, I'm here to tell you, you can't do this. Dick Allen started with a pair of strikes. He gets back on the strike trade here in the sixth. So we now have six strikes and six open frames from our four competitors. McNeil <laughs> takes care of that. Shots out there. That's what we're it seems like it, it never fails where players have trouble getting to the pocket, and then when they do, they don't strike. Let's see what Paige has here. See his career numbers on television. 
Oh, my. <laughs> I mean, I'm... <laughs> The only, the, only, the only thing missing from that shot, Rob, is a turn signal to the right. No, what's missing is the visual of me literally holding on to a table <laughs> in a chair saying, oh, no, not a gutter ball. Oh, it just, it just turned wickedly to the right or wickedly to the left. It's so compelling. There's a strike. Sherman gets one. Sherman's second strike. Page with the spare. Allen, your leader right now, as he steps up for his first effort in the seventh. He's 12 better than McNeil, would be holding the one seed right now. McNeil, the only player not to have thrown a strike yet in this game. There you go, Dick. To extend the lead. And remember, it, it was Dick in the round of 16, best of five, fell behind early. Yeah. Round of eight, fell behind early. 0 to 2. 0, 0 2 in a five game oh match. Boy. Young man, what are you doing? Roll it into the front and let the lane take it. Good. So the first little hint of negativity in Matt McNeil's game. It was a bad shot. He's trying to get the ball to read and roll early and get it done. How about Rhino Page? Can he get a break? Mm -mm. Nope. Nothing. Messenger nestles up to the seven. Yeah. So, so, yeah. yeah. I'm with you, Rhino. Just smile and shake it off. Right? And this is going to turn into a battle of uh, the number two seed oh, between one. Page and Sherman. Seven open frames now. Eight strikes. What do you call that one, Rob? Put on the skinny jeans. There we go. All right. Sherman now working on a strike in the seventh. He's made a ball change. He went from, I think it was a purple hammer he started with, to a black hammer. Look at just how subtle. That was 100. The down lane motion is he says that was 100, meaning he threw it really fast. Hmm. Quality shot here. <laughs> McNeil looking for his first strike. Yeah, Still awesome. can't find it. Again, this is the positioning the round. Not seeing the lane soon enough. It needs to set up. So all four of these are going to return. These bowlers. Some skinny jeans there too. You got to cover both pins. Yeah, I think that was a different style than skinny jeans. Those might have been like what? skinny cutoff jeans. Yeah. Capris. Back of a spare shirt. Is good, eh? All right. Here we go. We should just let McNeil do play-by-play -play for his own bowling. Yeah, we can. And 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 and, and analysis as well. It's easy for you to say. Apparently not. <laughs> You know what Dick Allen is today? He's the Grim Reaper. <laughs> uh, he is one of the nicest, warmest guys out there. Oh, he's great. But what a personality. You, yeah, you would not know it seeing the stubble right, right now, the frown, the, the anger, tats. the stare. Looks like his chopper's parked out front, you know. <laughs> he's got five strikes, including the last three. He's starting to run away with this one. He looks like he's going to be your one seat. Yeah. There you go, Kyle. All right, this is going to come down. Yeah, this, is, this is a battle for two, three, and yeah. four. Yeah, uh, two, two, and three for sure right now. And and Matt McNeil still kind of in it, although he still hasn't thrown a strike yet. Max score for Matt McNeil 187, Rhino Page and Kyle Sherman 193. Page two strikes and two open frames. <laughs> Strike number three. He's pulled a better game than that, though, with Rhino Page has. When you look at the scoreboard, he left the pocket 7-10, then he left the solid 8, the ringing 7. His only errant shot was in the 6th frame where he big forward. Everything else has been in the pocket. Hello. Oh, my goodness. It goes 
from gutter to hand bone. Don't hit me, Rob. <laughs> wow, that was way out there. That was way downtown. It's I mean, fun was... to watch, isn't it? I love this pattern. That almost went in the lake. It was so far outside. And it's... then this. This is crazy tonight. We're in. Uh, we're in. It, he's going to make a change. Uh, I look for him to make a ball change in the tenth frame to get ready for his first match, which he'll be a part of. The first match. Or four seed versus three seed. But Rhino Page oh. at one point was essentially your one seed coming into this event. So he's less than thrilled of this format, particularly the way he's bowled right now. He'd much rather nice cover. Just get to the title match, but it looks like it's gonna be Dick Allen there waiting for whoever survives. Yeah. And, and the cheetah right now is tearing up the pros. Sherman first ball strike and he's gonna grab the number two seed. I think Ronald Page has got a very nice look. He just has to figure out a way to get his bowling ball to go through the pins properly so that he can carry all ten. Hands out saying, I don't know, I don't know what's going to come my way. Yeah. Uh, he can't give some advice. And at this point, he'll try anything. I want you want to bet some of these tour reps are avoiding eye contact right, right about now. Yeah, it's like, hey, man, I don't know. Flip I'm going to see flip. myself to the restroom yeah. bar for a little bit. Flip the coin. Yeah, I don't know what to do. Rhino Page is your number two seed. Right, by a pin. Sherman, your three seed. Matt McNeil, the four seed. Your opening match will be Kyle Sherman versus Kyle. Dick Allen will be your one seed again. Oh my God. You like that, Rob? I, I more than like it. I love it. I adore this, but it scares the pants off me. I am legitimately frightened. I am 100% convinced it's going in the gutter I'm, every single time. I'm going to put in for this pattern every week just <laughs> <Right>. for you. <laughs> how you wrap it up better late, than never. Hey, better late than never you're right you're right matt so it's allen page sherman and mcneil in that order one two three four which means we've got our three versus four matchup coming up next sherman mcneil plus jason belmonte will join us live omar look omar check this out hi right, yeah i was calling to see if you do laser hair removal for men notice that my hips are off the ground and then I'm going to pike my hips back into downward dog. Hey, the rain stopped. A bad day on the road still beats a good one off it. Tell me about that dinner procedure again. I can still taste it in my mouth. Progressive helps keep you out there. Yeah, Sherman, Matt McNeil, your three versus four matchup, the second match tonight here live on FS1 set to come your way as they wrap up their warm-ups Bob Stone Randy Peterson Jason Belmonte joining us right now in the booth and this cheetah has been vicious so far McNeil a 163 had only one strike and it came in the 10th frame the winner of this one will move on to take on Rhino Page in our de facto semifinal Dick Allen waiting in the wings he is now your one seed after throwing that 230, which included seven strikes. And you look at those numbers, and what's interesting is that Dick Allen had the lowest overall average on Cheetah at 226. All the other players were over 230. Right, Matt McNeil was telling you this week that he has dreamed about this moment oh, since he was a three-year-old. Right he is a borderline right bowling now. historian. The guy knows everything about everybody and scores and where it's happened and you know he said I, I picked up the game at, at three and i would watch it on television it was always my goal to be here tonight doing this 
rolling in a singles event. Yeah, I think it's cool that he's also playing against somebody who's also making his very first singles television finals. So we've got two young, uh, inexperienced uh, bowlers in terms of television time, so it's going to be interesting to see. I will say, though, that Matt has... Uh, made a ball uh, adjustment. He's put a lot more surface on that ball that he was using from the first round. It's going to pick up a little bit sooner, so hopefully he's going to see that ball go through the pins a little better. This Kyle Sherman, 25-year-old. We talked about that in the opening match, Jace, where the players, it seems like, often does it fail where we struggle to get to the pocket and and then when we do get to the pocket we don't strike yeah and this this oil pattern it, it really it's it can be high scoring but your errors and the way that the ball goes through the pins can be drastically difficult to control uh, what I love to see was the way that Dick Allen was throwing the ball right at the I mean right at it and it seems to be that's going to be the best shape to the pocket now these guys are using a little bit of urethane it's not going to have that drastic angle off the gutter speaking of equipment changes kimberly pressler with more on a movement by mr sherman guys kyle sherman spoke with his tour rev rob gotchel during the break and they decided to switch back to the purple hammer that you can see he's using now but it's actually a different one than the one that he used in his first match he'll be going with a weaker one so he can stay a little slower and so it doesn't oh uh, yeah he's got six nine in the bucket yeah. Take a look at Matt McNeil's delivery. It's got a little Stu Williams left-handed follow-through for me, Jason, where it's pretty short. I mean, not near as short as Stu's, but I really like his positions at the foul and, and great balance. I, I, I really like what he's able to do, but right now he doesn't have the right picture in mind in terms of what, what he's trying TV to get his line like ball to do because nothing's Mr. working. Randy. Well, and when your rev rate is as low as Matt, yeah, you don't the have the luxury of do? throwing it a little further to the left and seeing that rev rate bring it back. So he has to be so much more accurate at the front of the lane and down the lane uh, when using urethane. So now he's going, to a, uh, he's going to a halo pearl out of the pitch black. He's going to a stronger ball. Are you a little surprised he waited this long? Well, we'll find out if you should have waited longer. <laughs> Probably should have waited a little longer, but I mean, I understand that move. He needs, he doesn't have the rev rate to create that angle with urethane, so he goes to a ball change, a reactive ball. He wants to see that angle. Now, the break point, as you can see on the screen there, is 5.3, not nearly far enough left. Didn't give the ball enough room. Goes high. And pays for it. Now, comparatively, Dick Allen was bouncing it off, you know, the first and second ball. Sure. That's where I want Matt's ball if he's going to use reactor. Yeah. Trust me. Exactly. Looks like he's going back for another conversation. <laughs> Just three strikes for Sherman in his first match. Looking for his second here in the third. Two division champs, Lamont Peterson takes on former 140-pound champion Sergei Lipinets in a headlining 12-round welterweight showdown. Lamont Peterson. Spelling his name wrong. Lipinets. Well, that's how they tell me to say it on the card. Sunday, 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific, only on FS1 in the Fox Sports app. Look, I get a lot of those, those type of names in my soccer coverage. In my other hey maybe maybe you should tell him randy yes go up and tell him he's yeah. spelling hey sergey sergey oh, change yeah. your spelling that's well, lamont peterson lamont yeah i don't like to ask either one of them all right kyle all right third year on the tour made a double show earlier this season in oklahoma his best ever singles finish ninth in the 2017 u.s open until whatever place he's going to finish here today. Now, I was talking to Martin Larson and Dominic Barrett and Oscar Palermo before this match started, and I said that this was one of the best shows for Kyle and Matt to make Six, because eight, you kind nine, of get that warm-up game, that seeding match. You don't get eliminated. Calm the nerves. You get used to the TV environment. It could be really beneficial. Now, it's clearly more beneficial for Kyle yeah, right now than it is Matt, but I think... It, it really would have benefited the players. Yeah, 
that's a great point. And I think, it, you know, when Matt fell that far behind, he should have started to look at other options in that first game. Oh, great pickup, though. Your hammer tough spare replay. Perfect execution. Yep, slide the six over into the eight. Ball takes out the ten. Well done. Take a bow, Mr. McNeil. I like that jersey. Hmm. Jason, this is a tough one for you. You have any idea what that jersey is? Uh, no. Okay. I don't. It, it, it's, it's a loaded question. That's not a fair question. I know. That's why I admitted it. It's a loaded question. Can we get another shot of his jersey? That's not front, the right one. Either. Front and back. It's a skyline, right, well, of his hometown, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Never been there. It's a beautiful city. Rock really great city. Place. Opened up a gorgeous soccer stadium today for their MLS side. Really underrated part of our country. McNeil has dominated on the amateur side of things, guys. USBC Open Championships oh All-Event Champion three separate times. It's the biggest amateur tournament in the world. Again, is a part-timer right now. He's got a job that he absolutely loves right now as a global brand ambassador for Storm. And did you notice on that spare shot, Jason, that he only used his ring finger and his thumb? I did not notice. Yes. I did not notice that. Yeah. That's why we pay Randy the big bucks. Go, go. Yeah, there you go, Kyle. Now, Jason, when you hear players say go, 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 that's usually uh, telling us that he got that ball inside a target. Yeah, and on that particular right lane, which seems to be the tighter of the two lanes, that's the lane that you want to miss left on. He got that ball to hold, and it's still shaped really nicely through the pins. This is going to be a really nice performance from Kyle. He just keep it on the lane, trust it. And I would imagine that he'll be moving through to the semifinals. He's got it figured out. Five in a row for Sherman. And a huge lead through five and a half. Kyle Sherman, just 25 years old, in his first singles television appearance. Looks like he's got another match ahead of him. I still believe you were guilty. Watch any episode on Fox now or... Bill O'Neill are staying this week? <laughs> you, you are, yeah. The Detroit Athletic Club <laughs> been absolutely amazing for us this week. You haven't been there yet, Rob? I, God, I got the invite already. Oh, you're killing me, Take Randy. a Take a look at the difference between Kyle Sherman and, and how Matt McNeil are playing. And remember, one on the left, Matt McNeil is using reactive resin. Kyle Sherman's using urethane. Remember, urethane doesn't hook quite as much. But the big difference is going to be here in rev rate. You see Kyle Sherman, uh, much higher rev rate ball speed. Up top of that, about the same. And getting back to the cheetah oil pattern, Jason, a lot of folks want to know why are they playing the extreme outside part of the lane and the reason why is because that's where the friction is and that's where this pattern tells the players to play but there's another factor involved well not only is it the best part of the lane to play but another main reason is because the further inside you get the less oil there is down the lane for the ball to actually get Great. to the break point so you have to play closer to the gutter otherwise your ball just will not push down the lane now bowling ball Army choice bowling is here. also extremely important right left, right left. as you can see Kyle made a, a different ball change he's picked the right one Matt still fishing still looking for that right ball motion and in a one game match it's such a critical part of the game your knowledge of your equipment can be the the make or break of it go back downstairs to Kimberly Pressler as Matt Brings that one up in Kimberly Matt with another change. Yep, another ball change during the break. Matt Mignol walked over to his tour rep, Tim Mack, and said, I do not feel comfortable with the reactive at all. I've tried everything, and I feel like I'm locked in a box. So as Jason mentioned, that uh, he's now using a urethane ball. He says he's going to play straighter and try and catch a five-bagger. He says it is all or nothing at this point. The 
leaves the seventh in. Thought this is where I signed up to have fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's still smiling uh, about it. Yeah, right now he's he's kind of feeling like he's slowly being poisoned. And uh, I've been there before, Jason. You haven't been there. Oh no, that. I've been there. Uh, not, of times. not 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 very often have you been on that side of it. Well, we're going to see more from McNeil. He might even make tomorrow night's show the Chameleon. He's already in the round of 16, which starts tomorrow at noon. But we know he's going to be in Thursday's live presentation of the World Championship as the number two yep. seed. Randy, help me again. Who's the number one seed? Uh, some guy from Australia. Jason Belmont. Fun fact, I actually have to play Matt McNeil in the first round of the Chameleon tomorrow. So... You know, I'm hoping that his confidence takes a battering tonight so he wakes up feeling sad tomorrow. <laughs> or motivated. <laughs> it could be one or the other. Right? Yeah. All right, so remember to join us Thursday night, 8 Eastern, right here on FS1. It's the PBA World Championship. There's your five finalists, third major of the season. Coming your way live, 8 Eastern, here on FS1 and on the Fox Sports app. And, of course, there's that $1 million bonus lurking out there should Jason or whoever meets him in the title match bowl a 300. Sherman, again, working the pace to a point where he's comfortable with it. <laughs> And it's showing here. It is really showing in match number two. Well, and that's what happens when you get a consistent ball reaction. Or if you miss target a little bit left or a little bit right, and the ball actually responds correctly, it loosens the swing up and allows the player to start freewheeling it. Check now, out Brad Miller, yeah, the dream team, right? If you get a chance, go to YouTube mm -hmm. and subscribe to Brad and Carl's YouTube channel. They do these video blogs all week. Every week on the PBA Tour, they're absolutely brilliant. They edit it themselves, they record everything, they're teammates, and they, it's, it's really great entertainment. Yeah, he was telling us today they gained about 3,000 subscribers this week with all the work that they've been able to do. All you got to do is go to YouTube, search Brad and Kyle. He's got a lot of airtime. I love it. Those two guys rolled against each other earlier today as well. Oh, Sherman took care of Brad Miller 3-2 to two in the round of 16. Crazy match. Oh brother and they ended up going out to lunch together when it was at least already shot 100 so i don't have that in i was i was just thinking that i was thinking you know remember tom doherty's 100 game against mika uh at the tournament of champions and at least matt's already got 118 but this is zero fun for matt mcneil down 102. come on seven <laughs> what are you doing? Everybody. I'll go down there and punch it in the face for you. <laughs> Again, Matt is done. He is done here, but he's not done this week. Again, we might see him tomorrow night. We're definitely going to see him as he contests for the World Championship, third major of the season. So we, we've got one more game with Jason uh, joining us in the booth. And... Uh, I wanted to kind of tease something going to break. Oh, yeah. I feel like you're stepping on my shoes a little well, bit. Well, I, I wanted to kind of set it up and let, and then let you take us there, but it's a Jason Belmonte story, and it involves a million dollars. Four times. Ah. All right. I got it. I'm with you. All right. Yeah, yeah. I like it. I like it. Great tease, Randy. Thanks. You have really grown in this role. <laughs> now stay in your lane, bro. <laughs> stay in your lane, bro. All right, match number three coming your way. Your two seed, the lefty Rhino Page on deck. Print.com to get 500 business cards for $8.50. Plus use promo code GP500BC to get 10% off your first order. Match number two in the books, a 136-pin victory for Kyle Sherman. He dropped the last 11 in a row, finishing with a 290. To put that in perspective, that is a 118 pin here in the second match. Take a look at your Ebonite flashback. Has an Ebonite flashback ever started with better video than Norm Duke? Walking out arm-in-arm arm here at the first ever 
Cheetah Championship at the World Series of Bowling 10 years ago. Took on Ryan Simonelli, best of seven format, won it four games to one after losing the first game and trailing in the second. Title number 33 of now 40 for Norm Duke. Two of those 40 have already come this season. Match number three. Your two seed, Rhino Page, shaking hands right now with your three seed, Kyle Sherman. Sherman comes in hot. Rhino Page had a 173 in the opening match, the seeding match. He had four strikes and two open frames. Yeah, but if it makes any sense, which it probably doesn't, it was a really good 173. Rhino's already won in this building. Piper, 10 years ago, he starts with the strike. He's got a chance in this match, Jace. Well, if Kyle's reaction stays as it is, 290, and he keeps going that way, he's going to have to bowl a very high game. But the good news for Rhino is that one got the pins to fall. If he can get a little momentum, put a little pressure on Kyle early in the match, we'll see how Kyle handles it. strike Sherman will finish no worse than third here his best result this season coming in was 10th at the PBA Lubbock Sports Open that's a uh, two game 300 game by the way the last 11 first I believe that's called the Andy Vera Papa 300 it is 12 in a row done over two games the arena leading into that shot. All right. Yeah, all smiles so far for the youngster from O'Fallon, Missouri. He's putting on a pretty good show for mom and pop who are in the audience as well. How do you describe the season Rhino Page has had so far, Jace? I, I think it's been pretty good. Um, you know, he's made a few shows. He hasn't had a win yet, but you got to give yourself opportunities to win, and he keeps giving himself those opportunities. So now, there's a really good chance for him to get that first W of the season. He's already logged three fifth-place finishes. Good pit action here, and this is a left-hander's best friend when you see the four go to the sidewall and cut the seven out like that. Those last two pins to the left. That's exactly what Rhino Page wanted to see. So uh, he makes his fourth TV Finals appearance this season. It's been a success, without a doubt, but he said it's also been a little empty. I've been in a good place. I just need to finish it right now. And he starts this match with three in a row. Today. Yeah, well, I can assure you that his ball reps and himself have done a little bit more preparation on that bowling ball. He wanted to see a different shape down the lane than what he had in the uh, four-person shootout. Whatever they've done to that ball, you can see now it's a really consistent shape, but it's a little earlier than it was in that shootout, which is going to give him a much better angle of entry into the pocket. The streak ends at 13 straight strikes. And now we've got some issues for Sherman. I held a couple of times last game. Well, Kyle's going to try to get his bowling ball over here to the right side of the three pin and throw the three over into the seven. The ball will take out the six and the ten. Converted 34% of the time on the tour. Now, I don't know if you heard him, Randy. He said that ball laid there the last time. So I wonder now... A lot. I wonder now what transition is happening with that urethane ball at that part of the lane. But didn't that look like it was too straight up the lane, Jason? Like there was not enough arc to it? 
It was too much up the lane. I, I think you're right. He's, he's trying to get a little more shape, but what he said was really important. He said, the last time I did that, it laid there. Big test here to see how the youngster responds after an open frame, knowing his adversary here in match number three has been perfect so far. So is that not the tendency then to make sure that you get it to the right? I mean, that wasn't a very well-executed shot. Location was okay, but he fell off the shot, didn't get the proper hand in it, and he comes in a little soft leaving that weak ten. Yeah, the ball certainly didn't come off the end of that pattern as hard as it had previously done, which is like you said, he fell off his shot, didn't quite get through it as hard. But the good news is, if that is going to be your bad shot, that's where you want it. Sure. You want it to be in that part of the lane so it can come back and at least hit the pocket. The only fear is, is if he tries to get it too far to the right and he slows down his ball speed, then we can see the ball overreact. It's a brutal pattern. I mean, we can bowl really high scores, but... You've got to get it close to that gutter. You can fall into the gutter. If you get it a little in, you can go through the face. Sure. Uh, if you're a little slow, it's going to go high. It's really, really difficult. And then when you get a, a consistent read, you can really throw a lot of strikes on it. You can throw 12, 13 in a row like Kyle did. Page up 26. Ooh. Pretty good shot. 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 Four pin leans on the seven, but it doesn't go. And you know, I, I, I know we, we've all been in that situation before, but you get that huge opening by your opponent, you're working on a string, and all you're thinking about is just extending that string. But that's where you want your opponent to feel even more uncomfortable. You want them to feel like, I now need to strike out. Now Carl's right. probably thinking to himself, okay, he can miss. Yeah. I just got to throw some good shots and settle down and, ba and settle back in. So that was a critical hit, but this next two frames for Reiner, to get that double back going, yeah. is really going to put the pressure on Kyle to execute much better shots. Page can max with a 279. Strike, 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 nine spare so far. That's some streak there. Uh, so that wasn't me because we are way too far away from the players, so... Heard something in the crowd. Yeah. When in doubt, back out. Reset. Refocus. Yeah, lead kick of the seven. See his location at the break point, 1.1. That's the one board in a fraction. I mean, just wrap your head around that. For the folks at home watching this, when you bowl in your, your league or your social play, that's the optimum part of this oil pattern to play. That's how close to the gutter you have to throw it. There's a lot of trust involved. Trust in yeah. your equipment and your execution to make sure it doesn't fall in. Yeah. I don't have that trust in my game. Got it, turned. Got it turned. Back on the strike train for Sherman. Kimberly downstairs with Mr. McNeil. Thanks, guys. So, uh, Matt, you know, you said you were, felt like you were stuck in a box out there. You tried everything, but you just could not get lined up. What happened? Well, you, you know, coming over here, they, they play a lot different than the Big Bay over there, which we bowled in all week. So, uh, I just couldn't get the ball to pick up the lane the right way. It either wanted to go too long and then uh, not recover the right way, or it wanted to start up in front of me and uh, go through the face. So, yeah, I'm just proud I grounded out. I made a lot of spares, made a split, gave the folks uh, a few things to clap at. But it's a long week here at Thunderball, so I'm looking forward to the week ahead. And this is not going to be the last we're going to see you. You have a chance to make it a show tomorrow. And Live look at Rhino Page. As he tries to line himself up here in match number three. We are back live from Thunderbolt Lanes here in Allen Park, just outside of Detroit. Rob Stone 
Randy Peterson, Jason Belmonte joining us right now as we take a look at Strike Track 3D, Randy. Yeah, we're going to get a little medieval on you with Rhino Page's second frame and fourth frame. His first shot, well, that was, ide that was uh, the ideal strike, that second frame. And you can see what he did in frame number four where he left the seven pin. But he's living on the edge, and that's kind of been the theme throughout. Rhino Page playing as close to the left gutter as you can play. Strikes in four of his five frames. Lead is at 15. He closes out the sixth. The winner to take on Dick Allen for the Cheetah title. Shot. I held my breath for that entire shot. Shot. His location has been really, really good uh, throughout this game. And the only blemish on the scorecard for him is the two seven pins on that left lane. The good news for Rhino Page is he gets to finish the match on the right lane. Squarely drops the seven. That's a good shot. Making right, here's Randy with tonight's track technique. We flash back to 2012 and what we're seeing tonight. Well, take a look at how high his backswing is in this first picture, and then how much lower it is on the right. And that's the biggest change that Rhino's made, say, the last six years, but much lower now. And it, part of that has to do with the surgery he had on his left, left wrist. No offense, Randy, but I think you were way off on your track technique analysis there. You were focusing in on the wrong thing. His entire outfit was orange. How are you not even bringing that up? <laughs> I don't know, but I also made a, a missed call on the seven pins that he's leaving. They're all been, they have all been on the right lane, the lane that he's chose to finish on. Throws that one in. So he remains clean, lead at 14. Big moment here, Jason, for Kyle Sherman. Yeah, coming out of the break, right now a double here will actually give him the lead in the match. So right now he can just absolutely change the momentum of this game with these next two shots. Sherman. You hear the crowd. There's mom and dad, Dennis and Tracy Sherman. Dad's got some pedigree on the lanes. St. Louis Bowling Hall of Fame member. You know who gave me that nugget, Randy? Who? Jason Belmonte. You know who gave that nugget to Jason? Who? I don't know. Who, who gave it to you again? Iggy Strode sent me a text message. Hi, Iggy, and all the guys out there in St. Louis. Great bowling community, St. Louis. Love to get the tour back there sometime soon. Um, you know, we teased that million dollar thing when we went to the last break. And uh, after this shot by Kyle, I think I think Jason needs to tell us his million dollar or should I say four million dollar story. Yeah! Come on! Look, look who just took the lead. So Jason, it's a great story about the million dollar bonus that happened back in October. One more look and listen to this strike. Yeah! Come on! Sherman takes the lead in the eighth. Again, Thursday live. Jason, the number one seed in our third major. And somebody bowls a 300 in the championship match of a major this season. One million dollars will be handed out. Well, the story is I asked if you make all four, all four top seeds, will you have an opportunity to bowl for four million dollar prizes? People thought I was a little crazy. I actually thought I was a little crazy for asking the question. Well, you knew it was a, it was a bit of a junior stunt going into it, well, but it's turned into a legit question. It has turned into a legit question, and I wasn't entirely sure it was going to be me, but it could have been anyone. But. The PBA and Fox announced, no, it will be a million dollars for each of those four events. So you've already had two chances at that million dollar I've prize. I've had three chances. I'm 0 for three. Three. Fourth time lucky. 
Here's tonight's Columbia 300 fun fact. E.J. Tackett entered this year's World Back, Series please. of Bowling as the all-time average leader in World Series of Bowling competition, averaging 226.39 over 508 games bowl. That's a minimum of 500 games bowl. It's a lot of bowling. Now this is a, a really, really big ninth frame here for Rhino Page. Strikes in this ninth frame gives him a, po a possibility of a 237, which would force Kyle to strike out, or at least to the 11th, to shut out Rhino. Ooh, looked like he got it to that spot right, that pretty quick. Worse. Yeah, he wanted to get it close to that gutter, but he yeah. didn't get it far enough down the lane at that point. It was a little, a little too, too soon. Agreed. Overreacted. Rhino Page in big trouble now. Kai, what a comeback from Kyle Sherman after that big opening in the third. Since that opening in the third, a spare, and then four strikes for Sherman. Page, remember, started so strong. Four strikes. He's opening five frames. And now he's been forced to scramble a little bit. Were you able to get your hand bone in there? I didn't hear it. Nope. Chase, did you hear it? No, I didn't. Yep. Nope. Nope. Right. She doesn't come out every time. I, I hear you. Well, this strike right here will give Mr. Sherman the opportunity to just claim a mark in the 10th frame. Well, he's got the crowd behind him here tonight, too. Oh, he's feeling it at the bottom of that swing. Got that a little in. The roll was a little more forward. Got the mixer. I mean, that's a great ball reaction to have. That same lane, if he gets it a little bit farther to the right, actually hooks up harder and goes high flush. But I don't think he can miss any further left than I, that shot. I agree. So here it is. The mark and Kyle Sherman will advance to the title match against Dick Allen. the I do not want to throw this one in the gutter right now. Yeah, that's pressure. And that's what happens when pressure gets to you and you start thinking thoughts that haven't crept in the entire night. And this spare, the 3-6-9-10, is a difficult spare on a regular length oil pattern. Now you're talking about 33 feet. He's going to have to execute and trust himself on this more than any other spare he's thrown this evening. Threw it straight. Yeah, clutch cover. Wow. Doesn't hook it at that 36910. He throws it straight at the 369. Covers the 10 pin. It, it, even though he tried to throw that straight, he's, his natural release still has a it creates a little bit of curve. So he he is inches away from missing that. Now, I don't know about you, but I would be not throwing it in the gutter again. I'd be throwing it a little further in and trying to six again. How about throwing it straight at the head pin rocket ship? Yeah, he throws it hard enough. That's That could have been a, uh, a possible strategy, but he trusts himself. Needs six to move on. He gets nine. He's off to the title match. And Rhino didn't bowl a bad game. No. Did not bowl a bad game. Had one Aaron shot in the ninth. Yeah, Kyle took advantage of every strike that he could throw. Made that great cover in the tenth. Boys, it's been fun. Sherman steps aside, slaps some flesh, and thinks about the title match. Jason Belmonte. Loves having you here, my yeah, friend. Yeah, me too. I'm going to enjoy this title match. It's going to be a bomb burn. Sure will be Rhino Page. Thank you, Sal. We'll see Appreciate Jason it. Belmonte Thursday night as he bowls for the PBA World Championship live here on FS1. But up next, it's the title match here of the Cheetah Championship. The youngster, Kyle Sherman, looking for win number one. Standing in his way, your one seed, Dick Allen.
wonderful bowling community here in the Detroit area. Can you imagine life without bowling, Randy Peterson? I could not. Okay, neither can that, gentlemen. <laughs> Live coverage of the PBA Cheetah Championship. Rob Stone, Randy Peterson, Kimberly Pressler, back here with you from Allen Park, Michigan. As we take an updated look at your bracket, we start with match number one. It was your seeding match won by Dick Allen. That's why he is in your championship match, taking on the three seed, Kyle Sherman. All right, it's time now for tonight's Go Bowling with Randy segment, and a certain fan has gone online, produced a video on the Go Bowling website to ask you this question. He's from Texas, and he's got some issues trying to cover a certain spare, my friend. Let's take a look. Hey, Randy, Dennis Kabatska here. I bowl league at Grand Station Entertainment here in College Station, Texas, and I was wondering, what's the best way to approach picking up the bucket? Well, Dennis, there's a couple of different ways to cover the 2 4 5 8. That's a bucket for a right hander. A lot of players on tour throw it nice and straight at the two pin, uh, get the bowling ball to cover the four and the five, and then drive straight back into the eight. Uh, what I would suggest you do, Dennis, that you're probably bowling on a house shot, is move your feet off of your strike ball about four or five boards to the right. Use your same strike target and throw your strike ball into that bucket. Remember, the key is covering the back pin, the eight pin. By the way, props to the photographer working on that for Dennis. Yeah, that was good. Framed yeah, it, nice that was backdrop. Good stuff. Yeah. yeah, really, really, yeah. really well done. All right, up next is our title match. And uh, Dick Allen, your number one seed, sitting back there watching some success and some failure. And he's had some time to, to mull how challenging this cheetah pattern has been. Yeah, and these players are going to attack the cheetah completely different. Uh, Kyle's going to use your thing and go a lot straighter. Dick Allen's going to move in with reactive resin and really create a lot of angle. It, it, Kyle's dialed in right now, yeah. and if he can, if he can somehow manage his emotions, he's going to be tough to beat. But if there's one thing we know about Dick Allen, you never want to bet against him. Oh, hallelujah on that one. Our title match coming your way next, live and uninterrupted here on FS1. And there is your one C, Dick Allen, waiting in the wings. Will he get another title this season? Find out with us next here on FS1. Ron's like bacon, man. Everything's better than bacon. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was a bacon. The PBA on FS1 is sponsored by Go Bowling for promotional offers, tips to improve your game, news, or to locate a bowling center near you. Log on to GoBowling.com. Images from the Henry Ford Museum here in Dearborn, Michigan. Wonderful museum exhibits here, including the Rosa Parks bus that you're looking at right there. Also the presidential limousine of JFK. We welcome all those watching us live on FS1. Also those listening live on Fox Sports Radio. My buddy Jason Kiefer driving through Maryland. Yeah. Just snapped the picture telling me he's listening to the broadcast. I'm not alone. I got a text from my buddy Troy Kendrick in Las Vegas. He goes, man, this is awesome. I get to listen to you guys on the radio. How good has the partnership been between Fox and the PBA. We are set for our championship match here at the Cheetah. Dick Allen, Kyle Sherman, separated by 15 years. Tons of experience in the Allen camp. Kyle Sherman's got his dad, who's done pretty good in his day as well, behind him supporting him. Dick Allen has really kind of resurrected his career this season already one title looking for a second and he's ready to fire right off the bat and that's how you start him dick about an hour and a half ago randy he became the top seed by winning our four person match number one which was our seeding match so he's had time to sit and watch and what he's done is seen kyle sherman win a pair of matches took care of McNeil 290 to 152 won by 138 pins and then in our last match he dropped Rhino Page by 25 229 to 204 <laughs> leaves the 10 well, he's gonna dance with the one he brought and that's staying with the urethane ball from uh, a lot straighter part of the lane it's, even though it's the extreme outside part of the lane and that's where all the friction is but what a comeback after the qualifying game where he only bowled 172. And like you said, Rob, followed it up with 290, 229.
closed out match two with 11 straight strikes yeah and then started the next game with two so the little andy vera pop at 300 games 13 in a row Head on over to PBA.com. You can check out all the latest officially licensed PBA apparel and merchandise also for sale here as well. If you're going to be coming out here Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, items include that brand new hashtag Chasing 300, the three-quarter sleeve T-shirt, the PBA retro line, host of other unique designs available out there. You can get shopping today by heading to PBA.com. Click on the Shop PBA link on the main menu. I I'm waiting for the ham bone line to come out How has it I not? Go. You know why? Because some weasel trademark the phrase ham bone before I could get to it. Really? Yeah. Can you tell them a little surly about that? That's weak. It is. Weak sauce. Yeah! Oh, boy, that 10 pin has been really? a weak sauce yeah. for Sherman here. Yeah. Really nice pitch there by Kyle Sherman. And ring 10 on the left lane, but this looked pretty good and then see the 6 kind of wrap around the 10 pin there. And It's a good start though for Kyle in that the first two shots of the title match, his first ever title match, were pretty successful in that he hit the pocket with both shots. Remember, these single pin spare conversions are far from a gimme this season. Well, he's already missed one 10 pin today. We we saw him in the round of eight, missed two in his final match, even though he still came away victorious. But we've had a season of missed single pin spares, that's for sure. Dick Allen is not messing around here in the title match. He is up and dropping 10. And speaking of misses, Dick Allen was the recipient of that when Sean Rash missed a 10 pin in the 10th frame of their title match. and. Dick Allen got up and struck out and stole that title away from Sean. But you're right, Dick Allen stepping up, taking no time. And look at the rotation on that bowling ball. That's a glorious replay. Wow. <sighs> Allen four and one through his career in title match singles competition. His first came in 0-2, his last came a couple weeks ago in love. Three in a row for Allen. He's got that unique ball roll, and it's because of what he does with his hand when he lets go of it at the point of release that a lot of times creates some great pin action, and this is good pin action here for Dick Allen. Opening triple for Allen, South Carolina native. 20th year Shots. on the tour. Shots. Well, there's a 15-year age difference between Dick Allen and Kyle Sherman. <laughs> Sherman down 21. Again, the 10 pin left standing. Boy, and this is going to build some character for Kyle Sherman being in this situation and you know the thing I really like about Kyle is he talks about the process out here you got to learn how to make match play then you got to learn how to win matches you got to learn how to make it to television and then you have to learn how to win on TV and right now this is uh, well this is a pretty good lesson he's getting early on from Dick Allen and the 10 pins he's left three frames in a row he was telling us about the learning curve how it's starting to go in his direction He's doing some learning here in the title match, though. Takes care of the 10. Remains clean. Hey, re and immediately asks for a re-rack. And, and advice from probably Rob Gotchel, his tour rep from EBI. Remember, we are coming your way in primetime all week here on FS1. The big one, Thursday, another major, the PBA World Championship. Jason Belmonte is your top seed. The big story there, he's seeking his record 11th major title, won his 10th earlier this season in Ohio at the TOC. The shot's going to tell us a lot. Needs a strike, Randy. Needs it badly in the fourth. <laughs> Needs it and finds it. I think 
Rob wanted him to move in a little bit and open up his angle just a little bit more. And that ball came off the spot or the dry part of the lane, a little bit more aggressive as you take a look at Dick Allen's arsenal, Venom Shock. And right now looking to add a little bit more Venom to his opponent with a fourth strike in a row. Well, it's been Venom Shock and awe so far for Dick Allen. Opening hand bone here in the title match. And Allen has the first four strikes in this match. Should he or any other bowler tonight roll a perfect game? It, look, it's just up to Dick at this point, right? Everyone in America with a perfect game, Randy, <laughs> receives a free game of bowling courtesy of who else but Go Bowling. To claim your free game, all you got to do is head over to GoBowling.com. Register for the Go Bowling Free America promotion. He's a third of the way there. Look out. Yes, no. That one kind of laid there. That was inside a target, just a pinch. It held on. And that was a full rack attack when it got there. Shots, Richard. Better shots. Come Look at that. Well, you hear him. He's talking to himself, yep. too, Randy. Not yep. happy with that shot. Yep. He called himself Richard. Better shots, Richard. Yep. You know he's serious. Yep. It's like when I call you Randall, I'm serious. Yeah. It's not Randy. When it's I Randall. call you Robert, you know, you know it's game on. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's got a peel. Yep. That 10 pin is just in a nasty mood today. Well, it's no part of Kyle Sherman's game. You know, that's the hard part. Rob, when, when you, you're leaving ringing 10 pins, you're pot committed to the bowling ball you're using, right? Because it's not like you're going from one reactive resin to another. This is straight urethane. Maybe he goes to the other purple hammer that he started with after leaving those three ring and tens, but the problem is you start to move and adjust off of a ring and 10 pin without changing bowling balls, and a lot of times you might end up losing pocket. This time it comes in just an, a little bit light leaving the half 10. <laughs> So now the question is, what's the move? Is he, is he stay where he is and just soften up? Meaning soften up his ball speed to give the ball a little bit more time to turn the corner? Good tempo. What would you tell him? Man, I, I think that on that right lane, which appears to be a little bit slicker, that he's got to back his speed down to give the ball enough time to react. I think he's probably okay on this, on this left lane, but we'll see what this shot right here is. He was a member of the Dallas Strikers last year. Norm Duke choosing him. I think he was the last pick, and everybody was so surprised. But Norm, he's had a propensity of realizing young talent. Thing to be able to hit the pocket, and it's a, a completely other animal to have your ball go through the pins the right way so you strike. 98% of the time, the four pin is covered and converted on the tour. his one strike. That's how you... That's Tom Strobel. That's how you right pick behind the four. sign. Oh, yeah. His wife, Kathy, right next to him. Tom, the owner here at Thunderbolt Lanes. What a great host. Yep. He's awesome. His wife took just to his right. But she took care of you today. His left, right side yeah. of the screen, yeah. Mm. Now the 10-pin finally bites Allen. Big shot there for... Dick Allen, or as I like to call him, the artist formerly known as Richie. But this is beautiful here. And I'll tell you what, he sure wanted that one, Rob, because he knows he has young Kyle on the ropes. Working on a string of strikes is Dick Allen, only to leave that 10 pin after the front five. He's also the artist formerly known as THB. Typical house bowler. Good story about that. Yeah, it really is. He, he's got a lot of really good stories. <laughs> he's got it tattooed as well. So the, the story behind typical house bowler? Well, it, you know, it, it's uh, he, he kind of said kind of feels that he, he he's just a typical house bowler, that he's not good enough to even be on tour. He's just a typical house bowler. Doesn't get the respect. Doesn't get the respect and whatnot. So he calls himself THB. <laughs> For a split second, THB was staring at 7-10. Yeah. 
he's got a comfortable lead right now, up 41, but the game is starting to slip away from him just a little bit. So THB, meanwhile, has six tour titles. He was right. He was uh, the MVP of the uh, of uh, the PBA League, uh, uh, I think, on more than one occasion. Yep, for the Silver Lake Adams. Let's put it this way. Nobody's surprised when Dick Allen gets there. Now, can Kyle Sherman turn this around? He's got a max score of 237, and Dick Allen has a max score of 268. And Kyle Sherman right now has to be thinking, Rob, I have to strike out to have any chance. lucky yeah that ball really labored to get there it looked like the execution was really good but boy it sure took its time to get to the one three so just his second strike and the fourth on the left and on the right here in the seventh as we begin the eighth well good tempo here tempo. Peter and Dia. In the first of five straight nights of primetime PBA coverage here on FS1. Back with you live tomorrow night, 2 Eastern, with the Chameleon Championship. Did I say 2 Eastern? I, I clearly meant 8 Eastern. And let's look on the positives here for Kyle Sherman. A chance to make history. 7-10 on television. Yeah. Fully done three times. The last 1991. Just stay rook? Correct. I know John Mazin is another, but Mark Roth was the first. In 1980 in Almeida, California. Yeah. All right, kid, give us some history. It's been made here this week as well. <laughs> He's lost his ball reaction in terms of can carry. I mean, he can still hit the pocket, but he's not able to shape it properly to knock all 10 down at once. That was a horrible break on a strike. And right now, Dick Allen's in the driver's seat looking for his seventh career win. So all he has to do is keep it on the lane and in the pocket, convert, and collect. Talked at the outset, Randy about one of the themes developing this season on the PBA Tour. And again, it's been some time since this really was a traveling tour, mm -hmm. where it was really a grind, week in, week out. And you're seeing the reemergence of so many of those great talents that you and I witnessed in the mid, you know, what, 205? Yeah. 2006, sure. 2007, you know, Wes Malott, Sean Rash, Dick Allen. Right. Back when we had we bowled week after week after week. Now keep in mind, typically the bowlers were used to bowling the World Series of Bowling after about a two or three month break. Right. Then coming in and bowling for two weeks, and then maybe another some more time off, and then some tournaments sprinkled here and there. These players are coming in to this event after eight tournaments. The veterans understanding the grind maybe better than the youngsters. Not that we're seeing. Not seeing young talent emerging and having good weeks, but as far as consistency is going, it seems like the vets well, it, it, are it, doing better. It, it's interesting who's been popping up. I mean, Norm Duke winning back-to-back -back weeks. and Jason and, Belmonte as well. Well, that doesn't surprise no. anybody, but, you know, uh, here's Dick Allen winning his for the second time this season, this season with a conversion there. Yeah. There's, there's his second win of the year. Yeah. And how about this? The only player to have won twice, other than Norm Duke, is another 40-year-old, Norm Duke, and Dick 55 years old. Get you some of that, son. That's how it's done. Get you some of that, right here. He's still not allowing himself to smile, is he, Randy? I just think it's pretty cool. Thank you, guys. The multiple Thank winners you. on tour this season. That man there and... The great Norm Duke.
You'll see Kyle Sherman again, though. Make no mistake about it. Well, you might see him tomorrow night. He's in the Chameleon round yep. of 16, which starts at noon. You're definitely going to see him Friday night in the USA versus the World right. competition at 8 Eastern on FS1. Yeah, it was a good run from a young man. Remember, Sherman, a 290 in match two. Took care of Rhino Page with a 229. Struggles here in the title match. Ten pin refusing to go down. And Dick Allen refused to punch. Come on, Messenger. Right across the face of the ten. But the damage has already been done. <laughs> Dick starts with a front five, and then he doesn't strike again the rest of the game. And it doesn't matter. Start strong, baby. Yeah, Start strong. Got out of the gates fast, never looked back. him about this resurgence this season i have no idea maybe experience is kicking in but well, he did give us an interesting line when you get it you better hit it yes. that was a great line he dropped on us and he was hitting it tonight yep and he's enjoying it as he should one of the more likable guys on the tour really he the really entire is. tour is I, I mean there's not yeah. a soul out here that we don't enjoy being around, but yep. Dick Allen is one of those guys that you get a little extra mm. hop in your step, the smile's a little bit bigger when you see him. Yep. And remember, in qualifying, round of eight, he was down in best of five, 0-2. He was one game away from not Thank even guys. making the show. Thank you. I happened to sit down next to him, and he said, get away. He looked at me, and he said, get away. And it was one of those getaways where I didn't know if he was serious or, or jerking me around. Yeah. And then he kind of smiled. And I went up to him. I said, listen, you're down too. It's March Madness, man. This is chaos. People, people want drama. They want fear. They want you to come back and storm back Detroit. and win three wins and get to the TV show. And then take the title home here in Detroit. Win number two on the year. Seven for his career. And he's standing by with Kimberly. Guys, we almost got a smile out of him. See that right there? And for the 40-year-old. You guys make the best stuff that I could ever ask for. Thank you, thank you, thank so you. So Dick Allen wins the title. We're back with you live tomorrow night right here on FS1 and the Fox Sports app, 8 Eastern. It's the PBA Chameleon Championship. That'll be the second of five straight nights of primetime PBA here on FS1. Your one seat, Dick Allen, stepped up and delivered tonight in Detroit. He wins his second of the season, seventh of his career, and the resurgence for the South Carolina native continues. For Kimberly Pressler, Randy Peterson.